This is Misty from the suburban edge, that place between the country and the city where together we can learn modern homesteading skills. Today I am going to teach you what these are and how to make a delicious chutney with them. This is a tamarind or tamarindo. If you've seen them at their, your grocery store and you've always wondered, what the heck is this? Is it a boomerang? No, this is a really, really tart fruit that hangs from the tamarind tree. There are two kinds of tamarinds. There's the sweet kind. You don't want that for this recipe. You want the tangy kind. Let's get cooking with tamarind. It's famous worldwide, but chutney originated in India. It's often used to provide a sweet or savory balance to a wide array of dishes. But what is a chutney? Chutney is a condiment made from chopped fruit, spices, sugar, and vinegar cooked into a spreadable paste. Does that sound like jam? Sounds like jam. The difference is jam or preserves are typically sweet, but chutneys can be quite spicy and very savory. My favorite condiment when I go to Indian restaurants is tamarind chutney. So it is exciting to me to bring to you a way to make it for yourself at home for pennies. And it lasts a long time. So even if you're not willing to can it, it'll keep in the freezer for months and months and months. It can be thinned with water. It's pretty fantastic. Let's just make it. For this recipe, you will need a pound of rind on tamarind fruits. You can also find a brick of seedless tamarind fruit at, at your local Asian store, but we are starting from the fruit itself. Either way works, about a pound of fruit. You'll need two cups or more of boiling water. You need two to two and a half cups of regular white sugar. I highly recommend latex gloves for dealing with the tamarind. You'll see why. And come down here and I'll show you my artfully arranged spices. One tablespoon of roasted ground cumin. Roasted ground cumin is also called gita. And you can find it at your local Asian supply store or I found mine online. It is different from regular cumin, and you know I love cumin, but I really love this. It's pretty great. This is one teaspoon of cayenne pepper, one half teaspoon ground ginger, one half teaspoon of black salt. Okay, a little word about black salt. <laughs> when I tasted black salt by itself, I said to Mark that it tastes just like low tide smells. I'm um, not going to put you off of this. It, it it adds something that you you kind of need. I had to find mine online. Um, it is a kind of a sulfury salt. It's the strangest thing I've ever tasted. It's not like flaky salt that you would sprinkle on something, but it really does add a flavor, a distinctive Indian flavor to Indian food. But I do include instructions on how to salt if you can't or don't want to deal with black salt. What fun it is to make new flavors with new ingredients. One teaspoon ground black pepper and one tablespoon kosher salt or Himalayan pink salt. Since we're doing an Asian dish, I chose the Himalayan salt, right? First thing you want to do is get yourself a medium sized heat proof bowl. And we are going to, I, not the royal we, I'm going to remove these crunchy shells from the tamarind. So I'm going to have you come down and check out what I'm doing. I have another bowl here just to put the shells in to kind of work over the top. It gets kind of messy, but it's sort of, sort of fun. They just crack open. And inside you have this fruit. And it's sticky. It's very sticky fruit. So sometimes you can take a paring knife and kind of help you pick that rind off of there. It's nicer to do it with gloves on just because it is so, so sticky. Okay, so what you're left with is 
a fruit with some really weird stringy membranes and try to pull off anything that easily comes off. If it doesn't easily come off, that's okay. Your boiling water is going to do that for you, but should get something right about like this. Next, once you peel your fruit, you want to chop it into, there's seeds in there, so you gotta go around the seeds, but chop it into like pieces and then throw it in your heat proof bowl. I'm gonna continue to peel and chop. This is what you get. You get some weird looking chunks and you can see there's seeds inside there. And even if I didn't get all of the membranes off, that's okay. The next thing I'm going to do is pour two cups or so of boiling water on top of this. I'm not gonna measure. We're going to get the pulp off of the seeds because it's so sticky, we need that hot boiling water to soften the pulp. I'm gonna put a plate over it to help keep it nice and hot and then I will see you back in 40 minutes. I plan to water bath can this chutney. I have already washed and sanitized three half pint jars. If you're going to do that, I will show you how come it's okay to water bath can. If you've never water bath can before, there's no easier way to do it. You don't even need any special equipment. And I'll show you how. It's time to get the pulp away from the seeds on the tamarind. So I'm going to put some gloves back on. Come over here, I'll show you what to do. It's like playing in the mud, <laughs> only at the end you get something to eat, not just mud. I'm ready to deal with the tamarind itself. You really do want gloves, if at all possible. Um, I do have my same garbage bowl here, and you'll see why. I'm going to remove my little steaming lid. And you can see that the pieces have really plumped up. And we're going to just, if, as long as the water's cool enough, you don't want to stick your hands in boiling water, I'm just going to run the seeds and the pulp through my fingers. See the seeds? There's a lot of fibrous stuff in there. And I'm just getting the, the usable pulp off of those seeds. So that's what I'm going to be doing for the foreseeable future. I will need a sieve, but at the first part of this, as soon as I've run my hands through enough, you're just going to get out as much of the big stuff by hand. I don't want that stuff. So I'm going to put it in the garbage bowl. You want to get as much, you know, you're working at this, but you want as much of the fruit pulp as possible. After I'm done getting the big pieces out by hand, then I'll run the rest through a fine mesh sieve. It kind of looks a little bit like applesauce. Okay, I've washed my former garbage bowl and I have a fine mesh strainer here and I am going to just put the pulp through the strainer. You can use the back of a spoon or I prefer to use a little rubber scraper mainly because metal on metal is not my thing and you just want to keep pushing that down and it'll come through the strainer and it will leave the garbage behind. I am not going to bore you with this detail. It's pretty basic, but at the end we're going to have a bowl full of strained tamarind pulp to make our chutney with. It'll go really quickly after this. This pulp that you just made will keep for two to three weeks in the fridge. It's an excellent make ahead project. If you want, if you're short on time and you want to do this, do the tamarind part first and then um, a few weeks later you can finish it up. So that's kind of nice. It's done. Next step is to add the sugar and spices. Now this is where it gets a little strange. The, like, the process I'm used to when making jam is there's just a set amount of sugar. This is not the same. Tamarinds can really vary in tartness and that is why in the instructions it says two to two and a half cups of sugar. You want to add sugar until it tastes 
sweet enough for you. What you're looking for in a chutney is a hot, sweet, spicy, savory. All of those flavors really come together in this type of a chutney. So you want to sugar it and taste it. See if it's sweet enough for you. Remember, we're adding quite a bit of spicy things. We've got salty, spicy, savory, sweet, all of it in this one sauce. So I'm gonna put in about two cups of sugar, maybe a little bit less, and mix it really thoroughly. I'm going to give it a taste. It may need more sugar, but it might not. You really wanna be on the edge of tangy, but without being so tangy it's inedible. And for everybody, that's different. And that's the cool thing about Indian cooking is it's very regional, it is definitely to the cook's preferences. And I, I dig that because it really encourages you as a home chef to explore new flavors, but also stick with what you like. You know, don't be dictated by your recipe. If you don't like mild, put in more chili powder. Put in more black pepper. If you don't like sweet, go with less sugar. I'm really encouraging you to step outside of those recipe comfort zones that we all get into. Tamarind chutney, it kind of forces you to do that anyway because every tamarind tree is different, the fruit is different, and it's really what you like. Now this is going to be what I like. <laughs> guess, guess who's making it? Me. But I bet you'd like it too. It is sometimes referred to as the ketchup of the East, which is funny because ketchup was invented in China. Ketchup is also the ketchup of the East. All right, well, okay, this is better than ketchup. Got that sugar thoroughly mixed in, and I'm going to give it a taste. See if it's sweet enough. Mm -mm. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> not sweet enough at all. Wow, my mouth just started watering. Ooh, okay, more sugar more sugar. I think my eyelid's twitching now. Yeah, that was definitely an underestimation of the ne the needs. And the last batch I did was just like that, where I ended up putting in a little over two cups, but you just never know. So you do have to kind of be brave. Be brave, my people. All right, I'm going to stir this around. I'm going to get the sugar level right, and then I'll show you what I do next. We're almost at the end. Sad, but true. I'm back. I put in about two cups, maybe just under two cups, and I've mixed it thoroughly. I'm going to give it another taste. Now what you don't want, I think that's perfect. What, mm, what you don't want is so, so tart, but you also are not looking for a like sugary, it's jam I'm gonna spread on my toast sweet. So it's a fine line but it's not impossible. When it hits your tongue, you should first taste that sweetness, but also that acidity should sort of fill your mouth and make your mouth water. Like when you bite into a really, really sweet, but tart apple. That's what you're looking for. I can't really find any other <laughs> descriptors, but it's not rocket science. You know, I say two, and, two to two and a half cups of sugar in the recipe and that's why you want to add that sugar gradually just because it's a fruit and they all act differently. On to next steps. We got our sugar balance. Ooh, I almost spilled it. <laughs> oh my gosh, all that work. Okay, we got our sugar balance corrected. It's time to just add in the spices. I'll be lucky if I don't start sneezing. That is a lot of pepper that goes in there. Okay, we're gonna just mix this thoroughly and we're going to bravely give it a taste. And this would be where we would adjust pepper if we wanted to give it more heat or sugar if we felt like the sugar balance was thrown off by the spices. All right, here goes. That's perfect. I thought for a second I needed more sugar, but I don't think I do. That's, that's good. And now, if I didn't want to can this, this will keep for two or three weeks in the fridge and even longer in the freezer. But 
I'm going to show you why I am confident that I can water bath can this. In order to safely water bath can, you need the pH to be 4.5% or less. I have here your basic litmus paper. The rule is the lower the pH, the higher the acidity. We're going to dip one strip of litmus paper, comes in a little matchbook, they're really cheap, it's so nice, into our chutney. And I'm going to show you why I'm so confident that this can be safely water bath canned. We got ourselves between a one and a two. And as we remember that the lower the number, the higher the acidity. This has a very high acidity and can be safely water bath canned. What if you don't have a water bath canner? Soup pot will work. I'll show you. Water bath canning can be done in any large, large vessel that has a lid. You don't want to stick your jars right on the bottom. I, have, I happen to have some cool washcloths my mama made that work great in here. You want to fill it with water so that the water is at least an inch or two inches above your jars. I'm using these shorties. So I'll need to take my tallest one and estimate how much water would be one to two inches above. So right about there. I'm gonna fill it with clean water and get it going on the stove and I'm going to put my empty jars in there so they'll start warming up. First thing is, put a washcloth or something in the bottom of your pot. You do not want the glass jar sitting on a heat source. You need a buffer between there. I'm gonna fill this up with water and I'll meet you over at the stove. I have my washcloth in there and the water is high enough. I'm going to just submerge. Don't worry about that washcloth if it wants to try to float. It's okay. You can make it work. And really I'm just heating them up. Now because I'm heating up my jars, I also have to heat up the liquid that goes in the jar. While I'm heating up my jars, I'm going to pop my lids in. You never want to put a hot liquid in a cold jar or cold liquid in a hot jar. You can crack your canning jars. And as we all know, I'm very fond of my canning jars. And you should be as well. So take good care of them. While those are heating up, I'm going to put my chutney in a saucepan and heat it up as well. If you've canned with me before, you'll need all the basic tools, your jar lifter, your debugler measuring tool, magnetic lid lifter, that's not, you know, critical. You'll need some white vinegar in a bowl, a clean um, paper towel or cloth to wipe your rims, and you'll need clean dry rims and clean washed brand new canning lids. I'm waiting for my chutney to heat up and my jars to heat up, so I'm going to assemble all of these things, and then I'll meet you back here. For you, it will feel like no time has passed. None. Absolutely. For me, same, because I'm magic. Yeah, you thought I was just skillfully editing. Not so skillfully editing. Forgot to mention, you will need a canning funnel unless you're super good at this, which I guess I'm not. I've left my other jars in the warm water. That's fine. I'm going to do one jar at a time. My chutney is nice and hot. And what you want is one half inch head space. And I'm going to debubble. If you have a big air bubble in there, that can lower what you got. So I'm going to put it right there on the half inch mark and fill it up until it's the right height. Tamarind chutney is sticky. I got a clean rag dipped in white vinegar. Of course you can put these in the four ounce containers and give them as gifts or put them in a bigger container. I like this size because I know it keeps very well in the fridge um, and we're only going to crack it open when we're having Indian food or the like. I have this turned up too high and the lids are on fingertip tight. I'm going to use this jar lifter 
to put that down there because the water's so hot. And also I'm just carefully pushing that dishcloth down. I don't want the three jars to touch each other and I don't want the three jars to touch the bottom of the pan. So I'll show you what that looks like. We'll get a little closer, okay friends? That's what you're looking for. There's space between each jar and there's something between the bottom of the pan and the bottom of the jar. I am going to put the lid on and get this going to a rolling boil. There's at least, this is my tallest jar, and there is at least an inch to an inch and a half of water above that. My short jars are definitely covered. I'm going to watch this for steam coming out. I want it to be at a rolling boil. Then I will start the timer for 10 minutes. Okay, it's really venting. And I'm going to set the timer now. 10 minutes. There goes my timer. I'm going to turn the heat off and crack the lid and set the timer for five minutes. I want everything to just set in there, come down a little bit from its agitated state for five minutes. And then we'll be done. Ooh, that's my favorite noise. Okay, the timer went off and I've removed my jars to this little setup here. That way I can move this to a safer location than in the middle of the kitchen. I, I already had two of them pop. Uh, this one hasn't popped yet, but they are hot. It'll pop soon. As always, if you want more videos, there's a couple right here. That one's pretty good. Well, I like that one too.